If you're looking for a unique store to check out, you'll want to meet our next guest. Joining us today is Brant Peters and Kathy Olivas, owners of the Stranger Factory. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Hi, thanks Hi. for having us. Good Let's morning. get right to it. Stranger Factory, what makes it so strange? Um, we, you know, we carry a wide range of unique and eclectic limited edition toys mm -hmm. and contemporary art. Um, everything from comic book art, narrative art. Um, we specialize in character designers, which yeah. tends to be a lot of creature designers, and so a lot of interesting and unique. Lowbrow toys. art, designer vinyl toys, okay. which is, okay. those are kind of new terms for a lot of people and concepts. Okay. But yeah. So, so you you mentioned that you're not originally from New Mexico. No. When I'm not you originally. got here, though, you're thinking something's missing. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. We felt we're we're both artists and designers, and so we've been part of this movement, and we've shown all over the world. And so when we came back to Albuquerque, we noticed that no one knew what designer toys were, mm -hmm. and we just didn't see this type of art being represented here. And so we thought it was a good opportunity to, to showcase all the people that we've met and that inspire us. Yeah. It's huge on both coasts, both the West Coast and East Coast, so okay. we thought about bringing it towards the center, and, and it's been really well received. Four years you guys have been open. We have. Have you guys seen an increase in customers? We yeah. have, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, every year. Yeah, and every day there's, li there's literally people pouring and saying that they didn't know this place was here or mm -hmm. what this was about, but everyone, again, it's been really well received, and everyone's pretty excited about it. You know, as we were talking during the break, it kind of reminds me of the Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, a and lot of people compare it to that. Yeah, and it's really interesting. You know, I know my 11-year-old daughter, she loves that movie, yeah. and I think she would absolutely be in love with some of the art you have. Sure. Do you guys get that a lot, where people kind of, you know, make reference to that Associate movie? Associate those two things. Yeah, yeah. That, that film is really groundbreaking. There were a lot of artists doing that type of work and stop motion, and it got mm -hmm. a lot of attention, and so we, we definitely welcome, you know, that association, and a lot of artists that we work with really are inspired, were inspired by that film, and so. It's kind of, you know, it has sort of, of elements doors. of, like, vintage Halloween, so okay. everyone's sort of nostalgic for this type of look in some way. Mm -hmm. It's slightly dark, slightly edgy, but it's all very cute and very accessible, and, you know, so. And people are liking it. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So why yes, not, why not keep first, it around? Yeah, exactly. So would you classify it as a gallery or a toy shop or a mixture? We're actually both. We yeah. have a formal gallery space, and then uh, next to it, uh, adjoining that, is a, uh, a contemporary toy store. And mm -hmm. so we carry designer handmade toys from all over the world and a lot of designer toys. And designer Small toys like like super limited edition. So there might be only five of this one toy in the okay. world. Yeah. So that's how that's how low and exclusive a lot of these toys are. So we've been talking a lot about vinyl toys, designer vinyl toys. What is that? Um, it, would you say it's sort of classified in two different areas? It's like the first area is sort of uh, independently produced toys by artists. You know, okay. In the past, it would be a giant toy company that would go and create hundreds of thousands of units. This is literally someone like myself going to a factory and making a hundred of something and okay. offering it to the world. Okay. So it's independently produced toys or toy companies going to fine artists and licensing their artwork to make toys or put mm -hmm. on art or put on apparel or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. right? What are your top sellers? What are people most uh, intrigued by when they go to your shop? Sure. sure. Um, I think, honestly, there's, uh, we have like sort of a beginning starter sort of toy format where a lot of collectors jump into that and Those they're called, called minifigures. Yeah, blind okay. boxes. And it's sort of the concept is like baseball cards in a way. You don't know what you're going to get when you open the box. Right. So there's always, people are always chasing after certain figures and certain okay. characters. So those okay. are probably our, our, I would say, our probably our best sellers, mm -hmm. right? And you guys not only sell items, do you guys also have shows, performances? We do. We have rotating monthly art exhibitions okay. um, that usually are the first Friday of every month. Uh, I would uh, go to our website and, and uh, sign up for our mailing list, and it will tell you if there's an off chance a show doesn't open on the first mm -hmm. Friday. But yeah, they're rotating, so 12 shows a year. Okay, so tell me about Peep Show. Okay. Because to me, it sounds... Um, Interesting. Let's <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> well, it's not actually a peep show, okay. but it's titled Peep Show. Um, I, I curated around 10 artists, uh, contemporary artists, that um, were already inspired by the classic sort of pinup in their work, even though their work was very different than okay. that. And I kind of challenged them, Kathy and I both did, to kind of, I guess, re-explore the kind of concept and idea behind the pinup. And so it's a reinterpretation of the pinup. Of, of, of the classic okay. pinup. Okay. Yeah. So it's not as risque as what I was. No, no. Should, we're hoping it's PG thirteen. <laughs> so you can never know what artists are going to send you. But that's, that's true. true. Yeah, that's that's our goal. So, so let's talk about tickets. How would somebody be able to go to this event? It's free and open to the public. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, the first Friday from six to nine p.m. Yeah. Um, and we the reception t tends to have several of the artists and. Uh, 
usually in attendance okay. artists usually. And, and, and uh, the show will be open throughout the entire month of February. Yeah. It opens oh, February wow. 6th. Okay, and then your other events, which day are those on? Um, usually, uh, honestly, it's the first Friday. So, first like, Friday. even so, literally f March, April, May, it's going to be your first Friday. When it's Friday. around a holiday, we'll try okay. and reschedule the okay. week before yeah. or after. But it's typically we try and stay in line with everyone else, all the other galleries in, in Knob Hill. Yeah. Just first yeah. Friday. So, if anybody, you know, kind of looks at uh, these pieces that you just saw and they want to know where to go, where can they, they find you guys? So, we are at 109 Carlisle Boulevard Northeast. We're basically on the corner of Central Avenue and, and Carlisle, and we have a giant sign. It's a stranger factor. You can't <laughs> uh -huh. miss it. Thank you guys for joining Thank us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, you bet. Appreciate it. If you need more information about the Stranger Factory, go to our website, krqe.com. We'll have information there. Stay with us.